and welcome to The Patient Pulse. This month, we're thrilled to welcome Dr. Judith Beiser to discuss how to safely use pain relievers while taking anticoagulation, which are sometimes called blood thinners. Dr. Beiser is a tenured clinical professor at St. John's University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Queens, New York. And as part of her duties, she practices as a clinical pharmacist at the Stern Family Center for Rehabilitation in the Northwell Health System, and she precepts pharmacy students and residents on rotation. Dr. Beiser is a board-certified geriatric pharmacist and a past president of the American Society of Consultant Pharmacists. She is currently an active member of the American Geriatric Society and serves on their board of directors and education committee. So welcome, Dr. Beiser. Please take it away. Well, thank you for inviting me to talk about this really important topic. A lot of people who are taking anticoagulation want to know what type of pain relievers are safe for them to take. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So these are my disclosures. So today I'm going to talk about the different classes of analgesics, also known as pain relievers, and then discuss which medications pose a risk to patients on anticoagulants and other blood thinning medications. We're going to talk about the safe use of acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol. And then I'll talk about some topical analgesics that can be very useful if you have joint or muscle pain. So these are the various classes of analgesics. There's the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, known as NSAIDs. There's acetaminophen. As I said, that's Tylenol. And then there are opioids, things like morphine and oxycodone. Steroids can also be used for pain relief, things like prednisone and dexamethasone. And then there are additional types of medications that are used for neuropathic or nerve pain, things like gabapentin, pregabalin, things like even amitriptyline and nortriptyline, which are used as antidepressants and duloxetine. So these are specific types of medications just for neuropathic pain. Let's start off with talking about the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are things like aspirin, naproxen, ibuprofen, celecoxib, and, and meloxicam, and there are others as well. So they're known as the NSAIDs. They're available orally and topically, and they're available by prescription, and some are prescription and over the counter. So these agents have analgesic or pain relieving properties, anti-inflammatory, and antipyretic or fever lowering properties. And what I mean by anti-inflammatory is sometimes you pull a muscle or you strain an ankle and you've got swelling. So these agents do help with decreasing swelling, but they do come with serious side effects. There's serious risk of gastrointestinal bleeding in the stomach or in the intestines, can also even cause heart attacks and strokes. They can cause kidney damage, and particularly in patients who already have some kidney damage to begin with for kidney disease, and then cause edema or retention of fluid and cause swelling in the legs. So there are certain times when we don't want to use these in patients with certain heart diseases as well. But for people on anticoagulants, they do have an increased risk of bleeding, and they can interfere with platelet aggregation. And platelets are cells in our blood that clump together and help us to stop bleeding if we get cut. So these agents interfere with the platelet aggregation, and they can also cause local irritation in the stomach and cause ulcers. And if you do have bleeding from these ulcers and you're on an anticoagulant, you're at an increased risk for severe bleeding. So we tell patients to avoid using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs while they're on an anticoagulant. And if you must take one, to consult your physician about using an occasional dose. Say you pull a muscle, you sprain your ankle. Ask your doctor or your prescriber if it's okay to take an occasional low dose of one of these agents. And we'll talk about each of these individually. Let's talk a little bit about aspirin. Aspirin is rarely used for pain anymore. It's generally used now as low dose to prevent heart attacks and strokes. Because we remember it said that they decrease the clumping of those platelets so that can prevent any clots in your heart and in your brain. So under your prescriber, your healthcare provider's direction, a low dose is safe to use with anticoagulants. And depending on your medical conditions, it may be recommended that you do take a low dose of aspirin along with your other blood thinning medication, your other anticoagulant, warfarin or Eliquis or one of the other ones. Some of the common side effects of aspirin, even with the low dose, are stomach upset, which could include gastric or duodenal ulcers in the intestine and easy bruising. So you do want to make sure that you take these with food 
to prevent any stomach irritation. And if you are taking a low dose aspirin to get the one that's enteric coated to protect the stomach. Just as a note, this low dose is not effective for pain relief. So it really only has that antiplatelet or antithrombotic effect to prevent clotting. I want to talk about the over-the-counter oral non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's the Proxen and ibuprofen, and you can find these in your local pharmacy. They're indicated for mild to moderate pain, muscle aches, fever, and headache. And as I said, you want to talk with your prescriber about whether an occasional dose of one of these would be okay for you to take while you're taking your anticoagulant. So naproxen is also known by the brand name Aleve, Metaproxen, Naproxen is the prescription only version of it and the higher dose. And over the counter, it's available as a tablet, a capsule or a liquid. And the tablets come as 220 milligrams. So the dose is one tablet every eight to 12 hours no more than three tablets a day. And again, to talk with your doctor about an occasional dose. Ibuprofen is known as Advil or Motrin IV. Plain Motrin is the prescription strength and it's available as a tablet capsule or liquid over the counter. And the dosing is 200 to 400 milligrams or one to two tablets every four to six hours. And once again, talk with your doctor about whether an occasional dose is safe for you to take. Now, new in the market, is the -the over-the-counter diclofenac gel or Voltaren. And it was recently approved for over-the-counter use for arthritis pain. So this offers a safer alternative for patients who are on anticoagulants. It's applied four times a day, and the dose depends on which joint you're applying it to, but they do recommend not to use it longer than 21 days. And if you need it longer than that, you need to talk with your doctor about some alternative for your arthritis pain. Because it's topical, because it's applied to the skin, there's less risk for any kind of stomach or intestine irritation or any ulcers. And as I said, it's safer to use in patients who are taking anticoagulants. Just as a note, diclofenac is also available orally as a topical patch and as an eye drop, but these are all prescription only. There are a number of different prescription NSAIDs, but some of the most common ones are celecoxib, and meloxicam, sometimes these are used short term after surgery. So you would talk with your surgeon and your physician about how long to be taking it and making sure they know that you're on an anticoagulant. And celecoxib, because of the way it works, may have less risk of stomach bleeding, GI bleeding, than some of the other NSAIDs. And as I said, there are a number of other ones on the market as well. So now let's talk about acetaminophen commonly known as Tylenol, sometimes abbreviated as APAP or APAP. And also just so you know that acetaminophen is known as paracetamol outside of the United States. So if you're in Europe and you go into a pharmacy, you would be asking for paracetamol. The good news about acetaminophen is that it does not affect coagulation. So it's safe to use when you're on an anticoagulant or other blood thinning medications. It does have analgesic and antipyretic effects. So it works for pain and for fever, but it doesn't have anti-inflammatory effects. So if you pull a muscle, it'll help with the pain, but it's not going to decrease any swelling or inflammation that you have there. Over the counter, acetaminophen is available in many different dosage forms, tablets, capsules, liquids, even as suppositories for children. But what's important to note is that you don't want to go above the maximum daily dose. 3,000 to 3,250 milligrams a day. And the reason for that is that in higher doses, you can see severe liver toxicity, liver damage, if you're taking consistent doses greater than 4,000 milligrams a day. So that's why we recommend that you stick with the no more than 3,250 milligrams a day to keep you away from that 4,000 milligrams. Also very important to note is that acetaminophen is found in many over-the-counter cough and cold products. So if you're taking acetaminophen for pain and now you're going to buy an over-the-counter cough or cold product, make sure you read the label so that you avoid any kind of overdose. So this is just a couple examples of some over-the-counter products that do contain acetaminophen. An example of a label so that you can read the label and look for that acetaminophen and how much is in each dose to make sure that you're not taking too much a day. Let's talk a little bit about the opioids or narcotics. They're used for severe pain, though we do try to avoid chronic use because of our concern about dependence and addiction and misuse of these agents. There's no significant interaction with anticoagulants, so they are safe to use if you need them while you're taking an anticoagulant. 
but do note that the side effects include things like sedation, confusion, particularly in older adults, and constipation. And so we generally recommend that when someone starts one of these opioids, like morphine, codeine, oxycodone, that we also recommend that they start a laxative regimen to prevent the constipation. And also opioid products, there are a number of combination products that contain acetaminophen. So once again, to try to make sure that you're not taking in too much acetaminophen, look at how many milligrams are in each tablet. Sometimes a doctor after surgery will recommend you, well, you can take plain acetaminophen, or you could take something like Percocet, which contains oxycodone plus acetaminophen. So you want to make sure that you're not taking too much over the course of the day. And some of these products are Fioracet, Tylenol with codeine, Vicodin, and Ultraset. And then just for muscle or joint pain, you can think about using a topical analgesic. These are things that just give you some local relief from the pain, and they're safe to use while you're taking an anticoagulant. So there's lidocaine, which comes in a patch, a cream, or a lotion. There's capsaicin cream, which comes also as a gel or a patch. And then even things like methyl salicylate plus menthol, which we commonly know as something like Bengay also comes as a cream, a patch, or a spray, and they can be used for local pain, particularly if you've like pulled a muscle or something like that. So I've given you a lot of information today. What's the bottom line? Acetaminophen is the safest pain reliever while taking an anticoagulant, but make sure not to exceed the recommended daily dose. Avoid oral non anti-inflammatory drugs and discuss with your doctor, your prescriber, if you can take an occasional dose. If it's just muscle or joint pain, consider whether a topical analgesic will be able to relieve your pain. And most importantly, when in doubt about choosing an over-the-counter product, consult your pharmacist. Talk to the pharmacist where you get your prescriptions filled. They can help you choose a safe over-the-counter product that won't interfere with your anticoagulant and won't interfere with even any of your other prescription medications. We're here to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful overview, Dr. Beiser. You've really helped clarify the do's and don'ts, so to speak, of taking both over-the-counter and prescription pain relievers while taking anticoagulation. So thank you again, and thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in. And join us next month for another episode of Patient Pulse.